Right, hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Krull War from the Spanish Grand Prix. And yes, a lot of drivers are starting to piss me off now, so there's going to be a lot of minus points flying around and a lot of rants. So please bear with me for that. Um, but without further ado, let's start with the winner. And we'll start off with, of course, Lewis Hamilton won the race. Um, had a good battle with Vettel all race. And strategy really played into Hamilton's hands. Um, especially with the virtual safety car where Ferrari pitted Vettel without virtual safety car but Hamilton managed to sneak in while it was still there so uh, gained a lot of time through that and eventually overtook and won the race as a result of Vettel being on the medium tyres and um, Hamilton being on the soft so it's a fairly clear cut race it's a shame what happened at the end uh, Vettel was closing in and Massa once again denied Vettel of any chances of uh, allowing him to catch up by being in the way again whilst being a back marker. Uh, it's a shame that that had to happen, it ruined a good potential closing up, you know, Vettel was down to two and a half seconds and then went back down to four and a half seconds. Um, so it was a shame that that had to happen and ruin a potentially great ending like what happened in Russia. Um, but, you know, you can't really fault anyone for that other than Massa, but, you know, we'll see. But yeah, so good, good race from Hamilton. Strategy played into his hands more than him because when he wasn't leading, it was whinging again. Um, so for the whinging, um, and he's going, oh guys, what's happening because I'm behind. But as soon as he's ahead and he wins, it's all him and not the team. Uh, you know, I find it very arrogant of him. But, you know, he won the race, so I'm going to give him eight points. He doesn't deserve ten, he deserves eight. For Tell P2, like I said, um, you know, he... he Strategy really was the main factor in the race as to why Hamilton won and Vettel lost. But, you know, Vettel was closing the gap until the incident with Massa. Um, but, you know, had he caught him, we'll never know now. And that's a shame. But, you know, that's racing. Um, but, yeah, it was a good race by Vettel. He took the lead uh, off the line on merit. And, again, virtual safety car pit stop. He didn't have that advantage. So that's what cost him, really. So Vettel... A good race, did a solid job. Again, I think eight points. And the reason why I'm scoring these eight points is because this weekend there's been a far, you know, Vettel and Hamilton are finishing where they should really. You know, but we've had some really good battles and some really good races further down the order and drivers have deserved, you know, they've deserved to, you know, they've, they've outperformed what the car should do, I should say. Um, so... We'll see anyway, but like I said, that's why they're not getting full 10 points, is because drivers have had a better race this weekend. Uh, so P3 was Ricardo, benefited hugely by the incident at the start with uh, Raikkonen and Verstappen being out at the first turn. Um, you know, without that, he'd have been fifth, you know, so fifth or sixth. But, you know, you can't really argue with that, that's just racing. Ricardo, decent race, but just really lonely. I mean, they nearly got lapped, Red Bull. They were closing the pace um, to. Ferrari and Mercedes these past couple of weekends, but this weekend they're back down to 1.5 seconds, I think it is off. So, you know, Ricardo, yeah, you did all right, mate. You got a podium, seven points for you. Uh, right, here we go. These are what I've been saying about the superstars of this weekend. Ocon, uh, sorry, not Ocon, Ocon was P5, but Perez P4 for the Force Indias. What a race. That's every single race so far this season. It's been a double points finish for the Force Indias. Fourth and fifth this time, back in 22 points for the drivers. I'm a big fan of Force India. I have been since they've come into the sport, and I'm well chuffed with the race this weekend for them. And I've been well chuffed with the season. Ocon's proving he deserves to be there. Perez is proving that he is a solid driver, as I've never doubted. You know, he's always been good. And fourth and fifth for them, absolutely super job. And they're going to get 15 points each. I don't care what anyone else thinks. They were solid, super, fantastic all weekend. They kept themselves out of trouble at the first turn and just solidly drove through from there, you know. So you can't argue with that. It's 15 points each. I don't care. That's it. Okay, moving on to P6, which was Nico Hulkenberg. Another great race. Again, <clears throat> same as the Force Indias. Benefited from the misfortunes of Verstappen and Raikkonen at first turn, and obviously Bottas with his engine failure later on in the race. But, you know, it has still been in the points, which is a good point, a good place for Renault. Uh, missed out on Q3 this time. I think he qualified about 12th, I think. Um, but, yeah, you know, a solid race, nonetheless, by Hulkenberg. And he's going to get nine points for that race. Very happy with that indeed. P6, good effort. 
And P7 was... P7 was Carlos Sainz. Yes, Carlos Sainz in P7. Again, a brilliant race by Sainz. Uh, didn't guess, get past Verline on merit. Yes, that's right, I did say Verline. What an astounding race from him, but we'll come to him in a second. But yeah, uh, Carlos Sainz P7. Uh, couldn't get past Verline on merit. Got it with a five-second time penalty. Uh, but, you know, we're solidly in the points pretty much all race. So, again, again, I'm going to say, of course, the benefited from the uh, misfortunes of the retirements but you know you've got to pick those up when they come so Carlos Sainz solid race but I think a seven we'll give you a seven again just because you didn't get past Verline and Verline is a a lot slower car and then we come to Pascal Verline now I gave him a lot of criticism at the start I gave him tons of criticism for not racing the first two races then I thought there might have been more to it in terms of money and things but he's just blown me out of the water I mean he had a fairly crap race at Russia uh, Brad, Mr. Viper scored in minus three for that. But um, yeah, a brilliant race. P8. He was P7 on the road, but P8 because of the five second time penalty. You know, it, I didn't see it, but apparently he crossed the uh, board, the what, the some sort of post that he shouldn't have crossed at, uh, in the pit lane entry, so got five seconds for that. Uh, FIA did the best job they could of not allowing Sauber to score points, but they did anyway. Four points for Sauber, decent race. Astonishing race by Verline, did a one-stop strategy. So, you know, Sauber, as much as Verline, did a great job this weekend. Um, and for that reason, they are going to get... I'm going to give Pascal Verline 20 points. 20 points for Verline because, you know, 10 points for him, 10 points for Sauber. Because that was a brilliant race. It came together hand in hand. 5 second time penalty were unfortunate, did deserve 7th, but they didn't get it. 4 points are still good, though. Um, so P9 was Daniel Kvyat, I believe, his first, yes, Daniel Kvyat, so his first points in quite a while, he's been meandering around, but P9, you know, again outshone by uh, Sainz, decent effort, but I give him five, I don't think Sainz, Kvyat did a good, a, as good a job as Sainz, even though he did get a double points finish to Toro, so, so I'm going to give him six points, six points for Daniel Kvyat, I know I said I'd be cruel, Wall, but getting crueler, don't worry. Um, it's just because everyone else is a complete reject. Um, Roman Grosjean in the Haas, P10. Picked up a point for Haas, but got it. We're looking like a double points finish, wasn't it, for quite a while. Um, Grosjean, uh, he didn't really do astoundingly well. He was always on the cusp of points and then was 11th for a while until the incident with uh, his teammate Magnussen and Kvyat pushed Magnussen down and that brought Grosjean into 10th. Um, but yeah, he picked up a point for Haas, but, you know, he's, out, he's been outshone by slower cars this weekend, mainly uh, Verline. So, yeah, Grosjean did a good race, scored some points, but off pace in terms of his teammate Magnussen until that collision. Uh, so, five points for Roman Grosjean. Next up we have Marcus Ericsson, another great race by Ericsson. It's... It's clearly just, uh, it's easy just to forget about Ericsson just because Pascal Verlein scored 20 points. But Ericsson did have two pit stops. He didn't have the strategy that Ericsson, uh, that his teammate Verlein had. But he was still able to get that car in 11th and still finish ahead of some big names and some cars that should be a lot faster if it weren't for the fucking rejects of the drivers that got in them. So, did a, a brilliant move on Lance Stroll. Yes, a faster car. I don't give a shit what anyone says about, oh, Williams are off pace this weekend. Load of bollocks. They should be ahead of Sauber's, but they're not. And it's just ridiculous. Just because they've got Lance Stroll there, they doesn't deserve to be there. But I'm going off on topic anyway. So Max Ericsson, a solid race. Don't forget about him. P11. P11 in a, in a car that shouldn't be there, but it is. And it's a good effort by uh, Ericsson. So Ericsson can have 10 points. You know, great race by Ericsson, and he had the same strategy as most of the other cars on the field. He didn't use the uh, time deficit, you know, obviously the time that Verline saved not having an extra pit stop. You know, so that's that's uh, a great race by Ericsson, so 10 points to him. P12, we have Fernando Alonso. He's finally finished a race, and could it be his last ra race in Formula 1? I reckon it is. He's not going to bother coming back. If he has a good race in IndyCar... And he finishes in top 10 on his debut in IndyCar. I reckon he's just going to stay out there. So I reckon Button will be uh, flagging for it a lot more. Um, but yeah, he finished his race at his own Grand Prix. He had a qualified P7, which let's just be honest, 
that's just like us flying to Mars in terms of probability of that ever happening. Um, so yeah, great race by him. Uh, got pushed off at the start by uh, Massa trying to take avoid in action from the first corner collision. Um, dropped down to about 16th at one point in the race. It was looking really crap the middle sector, middle sector of the race for him. I'm not sure why. Uh, but ended up coming back to P12, uh, courtesy of some retirements and things like that, and overtaking, um, getting past Lance Stroll again. <laughs> um, so yeah, Fernando Alonso, great race, and P12, decent effort, finished his own Grand Prix, he got a flag as well off one of Marshalls and went waving that around, so good effort by him. Um, Fernando Alonso, I'm going to give you 8 points for that, 8 points, decent effort. Uh, 13th, Felipe Massa. Now, had the contact with Alonso at the start, taking avoiding action. Again, as I keep saying, of Verstappen and uh, Ricard, uh, Raikkonen getting together. Um, Massa then uh, had, a, had to drive around a full lap with a puncture. Had to have his front wing changed as well, which took a ridiculously long amount of time for no apparent reason. Uh, but still finished ahead of his teammate Lance Stroll, which again proves how fucking useless Lance Stroll is. So, Felipe Massa, you couldn't really prove yourself. You're out of the points. You were never going to score any after the incident. Was the incident your fault? Not really. Avoiding action, it happens. It was just an unfortunate race. So, Massa, I'm going to give you five points on the basis that you couldn't really show us what you could have done. You know, points would have been possible easily with the amount of retirements ahead. But it was just unfortunate that um, it came as it did. You know, it was unfortunate it was your turn to get the bit of bad luck. Holding up Vettel... It was a shame, wasn't on purpose, just a shame, but, you know, can't really argue with that. Uh, P14 was Kevin Magnussen. He was having a good race, bless him. He was in ninth, I think, 8th uh, and ninth, battling with Kvyat, Sainz, uh, Verline, that sort of area. Um, and then just made a mistake and just ran wide and drove straight into the side of Kvyat and got a puncture. And that was it. Points were gone. Points went begging for uh, Kevin Magnussen. Um, so a shame for Magnussen, did a good race up until that point, but you need to finish, you know what I mean, you need to complete the good race that you've had, you, you know, there's no good driving 63 laps or whatever really well and then crashing, so Magnussen, you did alright mate, but zero points because, you know, just finish it off for God's sake, just let Kvyat past, you're still going to get points, but what a shame, but anyway, that just annoys me because I like Magnussen, uh, then 15th, <laughs> Julian Palmer. Now, the impressive Volkenberg finished P6. Julian Palmer, P16. Sorry, P15. Oh, I do apologise, he finished ahead of Wonka. Uh, yeah, P15 uh, for Jolioff Palmer. <sighs> he was so crap all weekend, once again. Nowhere near points, nowhere near doing anything remotely impressive. Minus... 18 million. Minus 18 million for Jolie and Palmer. Jolie off Palmer, I should say. I just don't give a shit anymore. I can't even be asked to score him. Because it's just all minus. It's just done nothing good for the sport. He's ruining Renault's Constructors' Championship. I mean, it's their fault that they even picked him up at K-Mag anyway, but... Uh, oh, I just really don't know what to say. It's just beggar's belief that they actually allow these knobheads to drive. Yeah, I've even got no energy in talking about him to be honest because I'm just fed up with it. I really am just fed up with it. Renault have made big gains this year, as can be proved by Hulkenberg, but we're not having any delivery of it, are we? Because he can't fucking score points. He's not got the mentality, he's not got the ability, he's just shit. So, minus 18 million for Jolie off Palmer. Oh, Lance Stroll. Oh, God. Yeah. If, if someone can try and prove to me why uh, you think he's still good and still decent... <coughs> Jamie Day. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, a bit of a frog in my throat there. Uh, but yeah, if anyone can else can pr still prove to me why you think he deserves to be in Formula 1... I mean, even Martin Brundle and David Croft are taking the piss out of him in commentary on Sky, so... Um, yeah, finished 16th, behind his teammate by two places, who had to do a complete lap with, no, with a puncture and no wing, and he's just like... What the friggin' hell are you doing there, for God's sake, Stroll? He just don't... He doesn't deserve it. He just doesn't deserve it. He's ruining Williams. And it proves that if... You know, same with Renault. If Hulkenberg has a bad race, they're not scoring points. 
if Williams has a bad race, you know, if Massa has a bad race, they're not scoring points either. And it's just proof of that. And it's just a diabolical nightmare. And there's no excuses as oh, he's never been to the circuit before. Of course he's been there. He's been there a shitload of times. He went testing and crashing there at the start of the year in Formula 1 car. He's done F3 there. He's done all sorts there. So that's not an excuse. It's just crap. He's just absolutely crap. So Lance Stroll, you're going to get minus... Oh, what should we give you? Minus 50. 15 million. 15 million. And just because I don't like you very much either, you can have minus 10 million for the next race. And I don't care. I don't care what you do in that race. Minus 10 million, mate. Because no matter what you do, it won't be good enough and it won't satisfy me. So, anyway, next one Valtteri Bottas retired with a turbo problem, we believe. It was certainly power unit related. Uh, running third until that race, but a entire pit stop behind Hamilton. You know, not good enough really for, uh, for Bottas, so. Not good enough at all. You can have four points. You know, that's not... That's before the retirement. You did crap before the retirement even happened. An entire pit stop behind your teammate. It's just not on. Uh, next up, Stoffel Van Dorn. Was doing all right. Looked like they were actually going to finish both uh, McLaren Ondas until he just decided to drive into the side of Massa. Yeah, just drove into the side of Massa. Uh, again, disappointing race. Yeah, I just don't know what to say. Again, Van Dorn are expecting more. Uh, I mean, at least McLaren are actually racing with cars now to actually retire as a result of contact rather than engine blow-ups, but it's only positive you can take out of it, really. Well, we were racing, lads, at least. Oh, good. Good stuff. Yeah, really chuffed. Um, so, Van Dorn. Yeah. Minus 10. Minus 10 for Van Dorn. You'll get more minus points if you carry on being shit. Only driver still not to get out of Q1 now. And Alonso was 7th. So, you know, there's some sort of talent there as well now. I'm starting to see that it's probably going to be Van Dorn is possibly like a Palmer and a Stroll. But we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Uh, Max Verstappen, <clears throat> yeah, first corner incident. It wasn't his fault. He was collected by Raikkonen. It was tagged by Bottas. So, it's 5 points for Max. And I was going to give Kimi 5 points because you can't prove... Um, you can't obviously prove how well uh, Kimi could have done in the race. Again, he was tagged by Bottas. wasn't his fault. Um, but because of the fact that he went and met the uh, little crying little lad who was crying his eyes out in the grandstand after he saw a Ferrari get taken out, and for them to find him and bring him into the uh, into the Ferrari uh, hospitality and for Raikkonen to have point, you know, pictures with him, and then I think he was at the podium as well uh, for the race, so, uh, you know, a big, big, you know, that is what the sport's all about, and it's good to see that it finally happens, you know. So, really chuffed with that. Uh, so, Raikkonen, you can have five points for your, um, you know, for your race that never really happened, but because of the fact that you... Uh, you did some good. You give that little, You met that little lad's day from crying his eyes out, so... Great stuff, Raikkonen. You can have five bonus points for that. So you can have ten points. It proves that he's human. I know people give him some sticks sometimes for being very monotone and being very flat and, you know, not really being in touch with anything. But, you know, that showed that he's a great sport. So Kimi Raikkonen, ten points for that. You're a good lad. Uh, Jim and Nancy didn't race, so no points for him, obviously. Uh, and that wraps up the Cruel Wall. Um, so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed the race. It was a shame that the race ended eight laps before the end because Vettel was catching. But until that, you know, that was a good race. Maybe one of the best of the year, possibly. I did enjoy it. There was action everywhere. There were some good drivers getting some good points. You know, solid, solid racing um, by some really guys that deserve a good result. You know, Sauber deserved a good result this weekend. Uh, Force India, 22 points for them is amazing. Um, you know, double points finish for Toro Rosso as well. It's just been a good weekend all in all. So, yeah, <clears throat> thanks a lot for watching, guys. And, uh, yeah, I shall see you for Monaco, where I shall be joined by my friend, Mr. Jow, Adam Jow, who you'll have seen on the Prague vlog video. So he'll be joining us at Monaco. So I hope you look forward to that. And until then, I shall see you next time. Much love.